Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this lesson, we're going to look at the steps to switch from Windows 10 to Linux Mint. And I will tell you why you should do it. As you probably already know, Microsoft will end support of Windows 10 on October 14, 2025. And this means that after this date, the company will no longer offer any kind of updates or support. As a result, you should consider switching to Linux Mint. Okay, if your computer is compatible, you should consider upgrading to Windows 11. The operating system works really well and it's actually free to upgrade. Check the video description to find a link for a tutorial on how to upgrade from Windows 10 to 11. However, if your computer is not compatible, you should consider upgrading to a different platform, in this case to Linux Mint. Although switching to Linux may sound a little daunting, time has changed and so has Linux, which has improved greatly over the years. Linux Mint offers a familiar environment for users accustomed to Windows. It features a straightforward installation process and it comes with many pre-installed open source apps. It also has an active community, so if you have an issue, you're more than likely that you're going to find a solution. Additionally, this flavor of Linux is less resource intensive than Windows, potentially improving the performance of older hardware. Now, if you're not interested in AI features, this should be another reason why you should switch to Linux. Unlike Windows 11 and Mac OS, Linux Mint and other variants do not include AI features. However, you can always access AI services from the web, such as ChatGPT, Microsoft Copilot, Google Gemini, and others. Also, this Linux distribution includes support for many different types of apps. Since most of the applications we use today are web apps, you will likely have access to most of the tools and services you use every day. Although Linux Mint is a suitable replacement for Windows 10, it is important to understand that Linux is not Windows. And what I mean is that Linux works differently. For example, while Windows uses the MTFS file system, Linux uses the file system like ext4, btrtf, and xfs. However, the open source operating system has no problem reading NTFS content. Also, you have to consider that software installed differently on Linux, usually due to a package using one of the different command line package managers. However, many distros like Mint include, include a graphical tool to discover and install apps similar to the Microsoft Store. Another aspect to consider before switching is the applications that you use because Linux has some software limitations. For example, Microsoft doesn't offer the Office apps, also known as the Microsoft 365 apps, for the open source operating system. However, you can still access these apps from the web. But you also have to consider that after October 14, 2025, Windows will no longer support the Microsoft 365 apps. Also, you won't be able to install apps like Adobe Photoshop, but you can still access the web version of the app and for many others. In addition, you can also install similar applications such as LibreOffice to replace the Office apps and the GIMP app to replace Adobe even though it's not as robust as the Adobe Photoshop app. Linux offers other solutions for installing Windows apps using the Wine application and using virtualization. If you really want to use Microsoft Word, Excel, and other apps natively, instead of switching to Linux Mint, you should consider bypassing the requirements and install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Finally, it's important to know that while Linux works well with most hardware configuration, especially older hardware, when getting a new piece of hardware, such as a network adapter or a printer, you have to do your research and confirm that it's compatible with Linux. Okay, let's dive into the process. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people it doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. Also, remember to visit my website for more tutorials and tech news. Okay, first, we're going to create a Linux Mint USB bootable media. And to do this, first, you need to go to this website. Then, scroll down and we're going to download the most popular flavor of Linux Mint, which is the Cinnamon Edition. In here, we're going to click the download button and choose the mirror to download the ISO. Then I'm just going to click here and I'm going to save this. Now, as you can see, this might take a while. Now, we're just going to let this downloading and then we're going to download the Rufus tool that it will help us to create the bootable media. So just go to this website, scroll down and download the latest version. Now, after downloading the ISO, just open File Explorer where you downloaded those files and then we're going to run the Rufus tool. At this time, also connect a USB flash drive that you're going to use to make it bootable with the installation files. Now, make sure that you understand that anything on that USB drive is going to be deleted through this process. So back up any files that you have in that drive. Now, select it from this drop down menu and then we're going to click the select button. Now browse to where you downloaded the Linux Mint ISO file, select it and click open. Now continue with the default settings and then click the start button. In here, just click the OK button and click the yes button. Click OK to confirm that all the data on that drive is going to be deleted. 
Now, before launching the installation, you must ensure that your computer can start from USB by changing the boot order and the motherboard's firmware, which means that you might need to adjust the BIOS or UEFI settings on your computer. However, since most devices have different settings, you want to check your manufacturer support website for more specific details. Now, while this is happening, we can start creating a full backup of the current setup to have a way to roll back if something goes wrong with the installation. Now, if you want to have access to your files in Linux Mint, what you want to do is just to transfer the files to an external hard drive and then you can restore them manually on the new operating system. Now to create a full backup you're going to need to connect an external USB hard drive with enough space to store all the data. So connect that drive and then do this. Open start and look for settings. Then go to update and security and click on file backup. Then click the backup and restore option. Now select the create a system image option, select on a hard drive option and select the hard drive that you want to use to store the backup and then click next and then click the start backup option. After the backup is complete, make sure to disconnect the hard drive from the computer and just keep it on a safe place. Now, once you have the backup created and also you have the Linux Mint USB bootable media, make sure to connect that drive on the device that you want to upgrade from Windows 10 to Linux Mint and then start the computer to start the installation process. Now, first in the boot menu, select Start Linux Mint Cinnamon 64-bit and press Enter. This is going to load a light version of the operating system. Now just double click this icon or right click on it and select the open option. Select your language and click continue. Select the keyboard layout, in this case English English, and then click continue. Now in here, check the install multimedia codex option. And if you get prompt to configure the password for secure boot, it's best to open the UEFI firmware and from there just disable secure boot. Then click continue. Now, since we're leaving behind Windows 10 and we want to use this computer exclusively for Linux and we already created a backup of the data and the entire system, we're going to choose the erase disk and install Linux Mint. And now click the install now button. Click continue to confirm the changes to the drive. Select your location. Now we're going to create an account, password, and then you can use the default options. Make sure to choose a strong password. For this tutorial, I'm just using a simple password. And that Linux Mint is going to install on your computer, which was previously running Windows 10. The installation should not take more than 10 to 20 minutes, but it all will depend on your hardware configuration. Now, to complete installation, simply click the Restart button. At this time, remove the USB bootable media and press Enter to continue. So here, we need to sign in. Now let me type this correctly. And on Linux Mint, we get this welcome screen. And from here, you want to check this option. And actually, you can go through this welcome screen to learn a little bit more about this operating system. You get access to the documentation, new features, and release notes. You can get some help. And you can also contribute if that's something that you can do. But if not, that's okay. And from here, we're just going to close this. Of course, Linux isn't Windows, but the environment feels a little bit familiar. For instance, you will find a similar desktop experience with a background and a taskbar at the bottom to launch your applications. And you also have something similar to the start menu that allows you to launch the different applications with the operating system. Now, one thing you can do here that you can't do anymore on Windows 11 is that you can right click on the taskbar and you can choose the move option and just select where you want to place it. Now, specifically on Linux Mint, you won't find Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. The operating system by default uses Mozilla Firefox. However, you can still install Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome if that is something that you want to use. Even further, you don't have the Microsoft Store app on Linux. However, you have the Software Manager. And if we open the Start menu for Linux and then we look for the Software Manager. And from here, you can choose and install the different applications available. So for example, I just click on Audacity and from here, you can click the Install button and then just click the Continue button. That's one thing about Linux is that you will have to authenticate every time that you want to make changes to the operating system. Now, after the application installs, you can click the launch button and that should start the application.
Now you can always find it right here. So if we look for Audacity, you're going to find it right here. Now, just to give you an example, you can also download packages from the internet to install applications. Actually, depending on the flavor of Linux that you're using, you're going to be able to use different packages. And specifically on Linux Mint, you can use the dev packages, which are the equivalent to the MSI and EXE files. So here I'm going to download and install Dropbox, and I'm just going to click the latest version. This is for Ubuntu, but it should work also on Linux Mint. And here you can see this, this is a dev package and then we're just going to double click it. And then we're going to click the install package. Click continue. That's it. Now if we go to the start menu for Linux, actually the application is already installed and it's right here at the bottom right corner of the taskbar. After the clean installation process, it's important to check and download the latest update, in this case for Linux Mint. And the easiest way to do this, if you're coming from Windows 10, is to use the Update Manager. So first, open the App Launcher, which you can actually open with the Windows key and the keyboard, and then look for the Update Manager app and launch it. Now, you might need to click the Refresh button to make sure to refresh the sources where you're going to get the updates. And from here, you can actually decide which packages you want to install. However, it's best to download and install all the available updates. To do that, just click the Install Updates button. Click OK. Confirm your account. And now the system is going to download and apply the updates. Now, after all the packages or updates are installed on your computer, you might need to reboot the computer. If so, just close the app and then let's just restart the computer. If you have previously transferred your personal files to an external USB hard drive, it is now the time to connect that storage to the device to transfer the files. I'm going to give you an example. I just connected a USB flash drive with some files. And as you can see, when you connect a USB drive, it's going to appear automatically on the desktop. And then the folder, it's going to open automatically. If the folder doesn't appear automatically, just open right here. And then you're going to find the devices connected to your computer right on the left pane. And then from here, you can select the files, right click on it and select copy and go to the location that you want to paste them. You have a few default folders to store your files and they're similar to Windows. And in this case, I'm going to restore the files and documents folder. And here I'm just going to right click on it and choose it, the paste option. And that's it. Now, if you have a lot of files, I will recommend to start transferring the files in chunks and not everything at once. Now, when you're done transferring all your files, you can unplug the USB hard drive or you can right click on the device and select the, the eject option. Now, since Linux cannot run many of the Windows 10 or 11 apps, you will have to resort to a different alternative. If you want to use the Microsoft 365 apps, you can use the web version of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint by using your web browser. Now, if you want to do that, just open the web browser and look for Microsoft 365 login. And then of course, you will have to log in with your credentials, which are already done. And then from here, you can launch your applications. Now, it is important to note that even though you can run the Microsoft 365 apps on Linux, the operating system includes LibreOffice, which is actually a free version of Office applications. And they're pretty similar to Microsoft Word, Excel, and all the other apps. So in this case, instead of Word, we have Writer. Instead of Excel, we have Calc. And then instead of PowerPoint, we have Impress. And while the default format for saving these applications is the file format supported by LibreOffice, you can still save them as the format compatible for Microsoft 365 apps. Although I have shown you how to install apps from the software manager, one thing that I wanted to point out also is that you can find many other apps. Another app that you can run on Linux is Adobe Photoshop. And even though you can use a web version, you can use GIMP for editing and creating images. And as you can see, you even have WhatsApp also for the desktop. And if you're a gamer, you can even install the Steam app, as you can see right here. Now, to wrap up this video tutorial upgrading from Windows 10 to Linux Mint, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to make basic changes to the operating system. So first, I'm going to open the app launcher and I'm going to look for settings and 
on Linux is actually the app is called System Settings. And from here, that's where you're going to be able to configure many of the aspects of the operating system. So under Appearance, you can change the theme for the operating system. You can use the dark, light, or mix. So we can use the light theme right there. We can change the color. You can also change different styles. I even think that you have more options that on Windows. Then if you want to change the background, just go right here and select the background that you want to use. Now, if you have images on the pictures folder, you can select it from right here. And here there are other different wallpapers that you can choose from. Now, if you want to change some basic details about your account, you can go right here. And from here, you can change the picture, name, and password. Then to update the time and date, you can go right here and you can select your region. Here, you can choose to display the date on the taskbar, as you can see right here, and other settings. Now, if for some reason you need to update the screen resolution, you can go right here on display. And here you can change the resolution that matches your display. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different features through the settings app. However, we can see that this version of Linux includes a device manager, but this is only to help you detect and install different drivers. Also, we can see that there is a firewall. And here you can set the rules. Here there's a report and here are the logs. If you want to create other users, you can go right here. Here you can select whether to set that user as a standard or as an administrator. Now, if you need to see the system information, you can go right here. Here you can see the latest version of the operating system, kernel version, the processor, memory, hard drive, graphics card information, and more. Now, if you want to display some of the uh, system icons on the desktop, you can go to desktop and then just check the options that you want to see. And that's it. That is how you can repurpose your computer now the support for Windows 10 ascending in 2025. In this video, we looked at the steps to back up your computer just in case you need to roll back. We look at the process to upgrade from Windows 10 to Linux Mint. And I have also shown you some basics on how to navigate the operating system and do some basic tasks such as updating the operating system, installing apps, what alternative you have for apps on Linux Mint, and how to change some basic settings. Now, let me know in the comments if you have have already switched to Linux Mint or if you're planning to switch to this platform and let me know why you haven't upgraded to Windows 11. Like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet and I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.